was Paul and Lance's relationship at the beginning of the season? At the beginning of the season, um, well, on the road to reconciliation. You know, we all do bad things, we all do good things, and um, clearly Lance has done plenty of bad things, and so has Laurel, but, you know, they seem to be able to, be able to forgive each other eventually. So the whole, you know, thing that Lance was holding on to with her not telling him about Sarah's death was obviously horrific for him to deal with. Um, the thing with that for Lance was that he didn't get to bury his daughter. That was the thing for him that was just killed him, you know, that he just couldn't get over. But um, he'll, uh, hopefully, Laurel and Lance will work their stuff out. They normally do. So, sure, we have better roses in no time. You see a lot of harsh things to Ollie. Do you think they're deserved? And when you see him on the script, you'll be like, ooh, that's harsh. Well, I would say it was really only two episodes of last season when I kind of, Lance kind of had it in for him. But yeah, he kind of was pretty uh, uh, abrasive. Um, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he got to spill his guts on that stuff, you know, and uh, he, he didn't feel so great about, about all of it. You know, that was a betrayal, you know. Again, you know, he trusted him, and obviously from such a, um, uh, a vulnerable place, especially in season two was it where he was working uh, behind the scenes with the Arrow you know he's putting himself on the line there you know and he was demoted and everything and he's, he's entrusted himself and his reputation in the Arrow an awful lot and then for the guy to seemingly be going around you know banging arrows in the mayor and all the rest of it and not telling him about his daughter as well you know it was a lot for Glance to get over so um, hopefully they'll have a they'll get back to the cosy conversations of you know early season two because I kind of liked it when they're friends. I feel like they're a nice little odd couple, you know. With Dickel picking up the mantle of the Arrow this next season, kind of how does um, Captain Lance feel about that? Um, well, um, <laughs> um, it's hard to answer that question, actually, because it's not really touched upon in... I mean, I could tell you how I would... how Yeah, how we would think about it is, uh, well, okay, the Arrow dude's gone... And this is that other guy that I tried arresting last year, along with Felicity Smoke. Um, and it, again, it's one of those things where it comes down to what's best for the city. Because Lance has obviously got his ethics, his, the law, um, system of justice, which he tries to apply to. But at the end of the day, for him, it's all about Starling City and, you know, what is the best for that city. And if these guys, in the absence of Arrow, team minus Arrow, if these guys are going around doing the best they can, um, then Lance has got to give them that, you know? And will he be Necessary bracing, evil. And will he be bracing for the city to be invaded come May? Of course. Uh, what was that line? Uh, must be May. What was the line? Is that great? Attack. City is under, uh, under attack. Must be City is under attack. Must be May. <laughs> um, yes, I'll be bracing myself to say that in uh, April of 2016. <laughs> That's a great line, though, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mark Guggenheim, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Of a general question, but can you talk a little bit about um, what he has going on going into the new season, just giving at work or possibly involved with Team Era? Well, there's an interesting thing actually. There is a definitely a, a, a rather at the end of uh, during episode one, there it's revealed that there's a little bit of a dark element going on in Lance's life. Um, it will be perceived in such a way, um, but and a rather surprising one but born out of that for me in my mind is it's interesting how people will seemingly do bad things for what they believe is the right reason so it just you know it's just what it's all subjective isn't it as to what you think the right reasons are what good reasons are so um, there's a very interesting play by the end of episode one we're like Lance? Really? Oh! But whether we end up considering it good or bad is, you know, will be up to the uh, up to the viewer. But um, there's a, a very poised, lovely poised situation with that coming up, so it'll be nice. I think nice. I was going to say, do you think that the line for Lance is law, or is what is the law? The law is that line of what's right? well. Like I said, he's he's had to, you know, in the first season, it was all it was that line. You know, there's no justice is always found within the law. You know, and he was so hard. He stuck by that so hard uh, until the season one finale when he had to go and work with the Arrow with that earthquake machine and all the rest of it. Um, and that's the point which he suddenly went, well, you know what? It's the city that's most important. And if I have to um, relinquish my own re reputation, if I have to lose, you know, batter my own reputation as a result of decisions made that 
make him look terrible in terms of working outside the law and getting demoted season two and all that sort of stuff, then fair enough. But if the city is the thing that ultimately benefits, Lance will take the hit personally if the city benefits. Because, you know, the city, as Lance said, you know, the, 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 his blood is in the city, the city's in his blood. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that is the thing that matters the most after his daughters. So um, he'll do anything for the city, even if he ends up looking a dick for doing it. There you go. Lance, ladies and gentlemen, lance in one line.